Now, there are other exciting regimens that are being um, developed, Pierluigi. There's uh, data with abinutuzumab and, and lenalidomide. Um, that's, that's actually pretty good. What do you think? Yeah, very, very interesting. Loretta Nestepool from MD Anderson will present here at ASH, probably today in the afternoon, the, the preliminary data on 90 untreated uh, uh, patients with follicular lymphoma using this kind of combination. So it's, you know, it's a R square of second generation, is uh, obinutuzuma plus lenalinomide, and the overall response rate is 98%. The CR rate is 92%. So the toxicity is the classical toxicity related to lenalinomide, uh, so in particular, Russia reaction and some neutropenia, thrombocytopenia. But at the end of the day, the data are really preliminary, but very, very interesting. So in terms of uh, the new update of chemo-free regimen in the treatment of uh, follicular lymphoma. 98%, our work is done. We yeah. should go home, right? I mean, uh, but uh, as always, these are preliminary data, and we yeah. have to be validated. But all 90 patients is a phase two, Monocenter, so you have you need to. There's, there's a bias yeah. there, but but still could be, but but, but uh, still pretty. Uh, but we've got to put it in context of thinking now. You've got lenalidomide. You can use with rituximab. You can use it with abinutuzumab. You can use it with a CD19 antibody. So you're seeing at this at Ash this year a whole variety of different partners that are anti CD20 or anti CD19 antibodies that are being used, all of which I think demonstrate that using an immunomodulatory agent with an antibody makes sense. You'll then have a choice of which antibody you think about and where you, so maybe we'll get back into the, well, what's the right order in which we are giving these types of therapies? And in particular, without any kind of cumulative toxicity, yeah. this is important. Would it, would it, uh, would it worry you to, to, to use a 19 antibody given the advent of uh, cellular therapy? Does that, does that play into your decision at all or? Well, if it was available? It, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if uh, if you've got a patient um, that would be coming to CAR-Ts, now we haven't got a CAR-T approved for follicular yet, um, but they're coming and they're very close and there are clinical trials that are available and I wouldn't be wanting to close the door uh, for a patient that looks as if they were heading towards needing CAR-Ts. Certainly in, in, in diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, I, I don't like to use CD19 targeted therapy for exactly that reason. I think the same could be true uh, here also. But there are many sorts of patients we've been talking about today who wouldn't be candidates for a CAR-T approach. Um, patients with lots of comorbidities in whom CD19 targeted therapies and people who've already had lots of exposure to the two other antibodies that we've talked about already, might it might just add something else that you have available. What about the, the addition of um, checkpoint inhibitors in, in this setting? Does you think that, Pierre Luigi, do you think that, that helps? Yeah, checkpoint inhibitors, so as a single agent, prim, uh, PEMBO, NIVO, they are not so active, but there was uh, two, three years ago another phase one, phase two study uh, by MD Anderson concerning the combination of pembolizumab plus rituximab. The preliminary data were quite interesting in terms of overall response rate, more than 60%, with 50% of CR. So, but probably it's not the, the real good uh, combination uh, for the future because uh, NIVO and PEMBO are not so really active uh, in the treatment of follicular lymphoma. The same situation is for diffuse epicellar lymphoma. Got it. 